hello everyone now we will discuss on the topic solid waste and hazardous waste management part 4 and in this class we will focus on the pyrolysis contents are pyrolysis and its mechanism pyrolysis process and flow sheet typical biomass pyrolysis technologies conditions and major products use of pyrolysis products some properties of pyrolysis bio oil and their reason pyrolysis bio oil upgradation catalytic pyrolysis important pyrolysis reactors utilization of pyrochar and gases and pyrolysis of waste plastics so if we see the term that is pyrolysis so pyro is heat and lysis is the breakdown or the cutting so, pyrolysis that is the thermal decomposition of carbonaceous materials by the heat in absence of oxygen. And in this method, our feedstock is biomass and waste, and we will apply heat in absence of oxygen or air, then we will get char plus bio oil plus gas, which will containing the vapor, water vapor, and other gas components like CO2, CO, CH4 and H 2. These are the major component of the gas. So, we have biomass applying heat, we are getting char, we are getting gas and this gas we can say some vapors phase which is produced after the heat application, some part is liquefied. So, that is bio oil. So, that bio oil contain some liquid molecules and that is also can be converted to tar and gas. So, it is the first step of gasification and combustion process. It is the only thermochemical process which converts different types of biomass and organic waste into solid, liquid and gaseous fuel. So, that is the unique characteristics of this pyrolysis process. We get liquid, gas as well as the solid material. And we see the mechanism in pyrolysis complex reactions takes place, number of reactions can take place simultaneously. So, biomass and waste we have solid, then it gives us gas and char, this is the primary phase decomposition reactions at 450 to 500 degree centigrade less than 1 second. Then secondary phase these volatiles, so we are getting char, gas and volatile, so that volatiles is further converted to gas and some part of the gas will be liquefied. So, that is the secondary phase cracking plus condensation at 400 to 500 degree centigrade greater than 1 second and then repolymerization also takes place. So, here the bio oil further be converted to char plus gas plus some bio oil will also be remaining. So, that way this is called repolymerization and this reaction is very slow reaction and takes long time like weeks and months for the conversion. So, that is why the quality of bio oil also gradually degrades if we do not take proper action. Products, products selectively depends on operating conditions such as temperature, residence time, heating rate and feed size. So, these are the factors which influence the product distribution. Now, we will see how the pyrolysis gas can be produced. With, with respect to a batch scale setup, here we are putting some feed and then it is heated, then high temperature will be there and we are sending some nitrogen gas. So, that inert atmosphere will be there in absence of oxygen that condition we are ensuring by that supply of nitrogen. Then when it will be of high temperature, so then the feed will be pyrolyzed and the vapors will form. So, volatiles will goes off with this nitrogen and it will be cooled down here. So, this is our cooled water in and out. So, in this condenser, so some vapor will be condensed. So, this is our oil part and some gases will goes up. We can collect it here in the tedular bag and get it analyzed okay. and the bottom part will be remaining some charcoal or char. And depending on the temperature, we may low temperature and high temperature, this is the normal range and this means low or fast pyrolysis, this is the range first less than 0 0.1 second less than slow and pressure may also be low and high. So, 
low pressure less than 75 kilo Pascal less than high pressure. So, these are some typical range and this is the batch scale production of pyro oil and in case of continuous operation. So, pre treated biomass and waste because we know in pyrolyzer some feed stock properties should be maintained for proper heat transfer and the reactions. So, then here we will be getting some conversions if we pass the carrying gas nitrogen to provide inert atmosphere. So, then the gas which will be produced here that is vapors which will, that will be going into this and that will also contain some particulates such charts. So, that will be settled here and recycled. Okay. So, then we are getting this one and this is the gas. So, then it is further condensed that is vapor basically. So, it is condensed some part will be not condensed and it will go out as a gas and it will be treated further and used for other application and when which part of this vapor is condensed that we are getting as a bio oil and then this cooling arrangement is made. So, water to purification and disposal. Okay. So, this is the scheme for the pyrolysis of biomass and waste. A number of reactions such as cracking, dehydration, dehydrogenation, isomerization, aromatization and condensation take place during pyrolysis. So, pyrolysis is not a single reaction, a multiple reactions, different types of reactions can take place simultaneously. Now, we will see the different types of pyrolysis like say carbonization, slow pyrolysis, fast pyrolysis. Then here we will see the difference in temperature, heating rate, residence time and product distribution. So, for carbonization you see certainly our main objective is to get solid part or that is the charcoal. So, to get the charcoal we need to apply low heating rate. So, very low heating rate and our residence time should be more hours to days and temperature also will be medium. So, 350 to 500 degree centigrade and for slow pyrolysis this is the temperature range, but heating rate is more than this medium and then 5 to 30 minute time and char and gases. Then this cracking takes place at this step then further reaction can take place thereafter and 450 and low for hours and then charcoal liquid and gases. Here we get char and gas, here we get charcoal liquid and gases. And in case of first pyrolysis, this is temperature 400 to 650 degree centigrade and high heating rate and residence time 0 0.5 to 5 seconds and liquid and gases are produced. Then flash pyrolysis, this is the temperature range and then this is high heating rate residence time is less liquid and gases are produced and ultra pyrolysis 1000 degree centigrade very high heating rate and residence time is less and the chemicals and gases. Vacuum pyrolysis 350 to 400 temperature is relatively less and then medium heating rate low residence time and liquids is basically preferably produced and hydrolysis less than 500 degree centigrade high heating rate less than 10 seconds again it gives such liquid and methanopyrolysis greater than 700 degree centigrade high heating rate less than 10 seconds residence time and gives liquid product. So, these are the different types of pyrolysis which have been reported in literature and their product distributions varies, their heating rate varies and their temperature and residence time also varies. Now, we will see the applications of pyrolysis products. So, from the pyrolysis say first pyrolysis we will be getting gas, liquid and char. So, this gas and char both can be used to provide heat for the first pyrolysis process because pyrolysis process is an endothermic reaction. So, that can be recovered or the char can be used for other applications also. And then liquid which we are getting that may not be used directly because of its inferior quality as we mentioned that moisture content is higher. So, we have to remove the moisture first then we have to upgrade it. We will see that its properties fuel properties are also not that good. We will see that its fuel properties are also not, not good and requires upgradation. So, different applications are say extraction or conversion 
upgrading, we can use this for gasification purpose, we can use it in turbine, we can use it in engine, we can use it in for co firing in cogeneration plant or it can be used in boiler. So, these are the different applications which we can have with this pyrolysis bio oil and conversion and gasifications upgradations can give us different type of chemicals and transportation fuels and turbine, boiler, engine, co firing all these can give us electricity and heat. So, these are the different applications of liquid fuel which we get through the pyrolysis of biomass and wastes. Now, various chemicals and fuels from the pyrolysis bio oil can be produced. Some chemicals and fuels from pyrolysis bio oil are like say different chemicals like resins, fertilizer, flavors, adhesives, acetic acid, industrial feedstocks we can get and fuels like hydrogen, upgraded HDO, hydro D oxygenated oil and then fuel via syn gas we can use it for the gasification purpose and we can get the syn gas and from syn gas to liquid fuel. So, these are the different applications of the bio oil and we will see now the properties of bio oil some important properties and their reason like say appearance it looks like a dark red brown to dark green color. So, because of microcarbon and chemical composition in the oil normally it possesses some odor the distinctive odor and accrete smoky smell smoky smell. So, that is because of lower molecular weight aldehydes and acids density is very high compared to fossil fuels pyrolysis bio oil is 1.2 kg per liter whereas, fossil fuel is 0.85 kg per liter for typical value. So, high moisture and heavy molecular contamination because of that this density is higher and viscosity can vary from as low as 25 centistokes to as high as 1000 centistokes that is because of wide range of heat stocks, water content and the amount of light ends collected and heating value significantly lower than fossil fuel because of high oxygen content. Now, we will see there is some aging properties of the this pyrolysis oil that is viscosity increase, volatility decrease, phase separations and depositions of gum occurs with time that means, the quality degrades with time. So, because of the complex structure with acids, aldehydes, alcohol, sugars, furfural and furans etcetera due to the degradation of cellulose and hemicellulose, phenols, guaicols, syringols, vanillin, various aromatic compounds and high molecular weight water insoluble compounds from lignin degradation and miscibility if we see the miscible with bio oil is miscible with polar solvent, but totally immiscible with petroleum fuel because this is polar in nature. Now, if we compare the properties of this the pyrolysis bio oil and petrol diesel then you see the water content is much more in case of bio oil. 15 to 30 percent whereas, diesel is very very less. Okay. So, due to original moisture in feedstock dehydration reactions and storage water reduces the heating value and viscosity. So, these are the negative impact of this water and oxygen content is very high in case of bio oil 35 to 40 percent whereas, diesel has 0. So, it leads to the lower energy density and immiscibility with hydrocarbon fuels. So, this is the reason why it is not miscible with the hydrocarbon fuel and low pH it has 2.5 pH. So, large amounts of carboxylic acids such as acetic and formic acids are available in it. Viscosity is also that is 40 to 100 unit where it is in case of diesel it is 4. So, this is important for fuel injection system viscosity is very very important. So, low viscosity is desirable and so this directly bio oil cannot be used in engine. HHV here is 16 to 19 less HHV with respect to diesel that is 45 mega joule per kg. So, low HHV due to high oxygen content as you have discussed and NAS content is here 0 to 0 0.2 whereas, in diesel 0 0.01. So, alkali metals in NAS can cause corrosion problem. So, these are the negative impact of uh, these are the negative aspect of the 
bio oil which is produced through the pyrolysis of biomass and waste. So, it requires upgradation. Now, the upgradation can be done through physical route or through chemical route like say physically the filtration for char removal, emulsification with hydrocarbons and solvent addition. So, these are some example through which the quality can be improved. Chemically reaction with alcohols, catalytic deoxygenation. So, by the help of hydrotating and catalytic vapor cracking. So, these are some routes through which the bio oil can be upgraded and bio oil contains heavy compounds with long carbon chain, low hydrogen by carbon ratio and high oxygen by carbon ratio. Upgrading is done to remove oxygenated compounds responsible for reducing the quality of the bio oil either through hydrotating or catalytic cracking. Hydrotating is performed at a temperature of around 350 degree centigrade under high pressure of hydrogen in presence of heterogeneous cobalt molybdenum, nickel molybdenum based catalyst. Now, we will see the catalytic pyrolysis. So, pyrolysis is a thermal process, no catalyst is used, but if we use the catalyst then the temperature requirement may be reduced and the quality of the pyro oil or bio oil produced through the pyrolysis can be improved. So, the catalytic pyrolysis is operated at a atmospheric pressure, wide variety of catalyst available based on the product needed and can be integrated in the unit used for pyrolysis. The main aim of catalytic cracking is to reduce acidity, viscosity, oxygen content, increase heating value and produce low carbon chain compounds. Geolite based catalyst which contains the suitable porous structure and acidic properties are often used for biomass pyrolysis. But you know we are using the waste and we are trying to produce bio oil from it and the that is why the catalyst cost should not be very high. So, low cost catalyst is very very important and many research is also going on to develop low cost catalyst for the upgradation of bio oil. Some catalyst used in the past for biomass pyrolysis are SI, SBA 15, AL SBA 15, ZSM 5 zeolite, H ZSM 528, H ZSM 580, H ZSM 5 and nickel, cobalt, iron and gallium substituted ZSM 5 catalyst. So, here mostly ZSM based catalyst have been reported, but after that some other type of catalyst are also being investigated in recent years. Now, we will be talking about the pyrolysis reactors. So, there are different types of reactors which have been used for the pyrolysis pur purpose like fixed bed reactor, fluorized bed reactor, circulating fluorized bed reactor, ablative reactor, rotating cone reactor, vacuum pyrolysis reactor, auger or screw type reactor. So, if we compare the different types of reactors with respect to say status whether it is commercial demonstrated or it in laboratory scale or what is the bio oil yield, what is the complexity and what is the feed size requirement and inert gas requirements, specific reactor size and scale up possibility. Then we can see the data in this table. So, fluidized fluid bed, then circulatory fluidized bed, then rotating cone, ablative, agar and vacuum, this different type of reactors are mentioned here and status we see the commercial is fluorized bed and CF, CFB circulatory fluoride bed, these two are commercial reactor, others are rotating cone demonstration level, ablative laboratory and these are uh, not that matured one. So, here we see the bio oil yield are around 60 to 70 percent and complexity level is also different for different type of reactors and feed size is also different, inert requirement is also different specific reactor size are also different, but it is these are already commercialized. So, scale up is very easy for this type of reactors. Now, we will see the application of char. So, biochar which is produced through the pyrolysis that can be used for multiple applications like say solid fuel that can be used as a solid fuel and that can be used as a soil conditioner and fertilizer. So, char which is produced that will be having surface area and its porous structure. So, when it will be added with the soil, so it will help the diffusion of oxygen in the soil and it will help to 
make the environment more healthy for the growth of the plants and activated carbon production that can be used for the production of activated carbon which can be used for adsorption or any other application and this can be used as an adsorbent also. So, these are different applications of this char and activated carbon from pyrochar for the production of activated carbon from pyrochar there are basically two types of methods have been used one is physical activation and this is your chemical activation. So, activated carbon 500 to 2500 meter square per gram can be produced via two types of industrial processes reaction of the solid pyrolytic biochar material using hot oxidizing agents such as steam or CO2 at around 800 to 1000 degree centigrade that is your physical activation and chemical activation through the use of an impregnating agent such as strong acid or base at temperature between 450 to 700 degree centigrade. Phosphoric acid, zinc chloride and potassium hydroxide are commonly used for this purpose. The chemical methods can produce higher surface areas, however this method presents three main drawbacks like say use of chemicals that are potentially toxic such as zinc chloride and intensive washing required after activation risk of leaching chemicals that have not completely been washed. So, these are the some aspect of the activation of the char produced through the pyrolysis of biomass and waste. The physical activation burns up remaining tars and further oxidizes the carbon structure from the skeleton of pores that were formed during carbonization. CO2 is normally preferred for this application since it is clean, easy to handle and facilitates the control of the process. Important reactions during physical activations are C plus H2O, so that is equal to CO plus H2. CO plus half O2 CO2, H2 plus half O2 H2O, C plus O2 CO2 and CO2 plus C2 CO. So, these are the re different reactions takes place during the activation of the char through the physical mode, through the physical activation route. Now, application of gaseous products. So, it mainly contains CO2, CO and CH4 and H2. So, when it is containing CH4 and H2, certainly it will be having some heating value. The calorific value ranges from 6.4 to 9.8 megajoule per kg and it can be used to provide the process heat for pyrolysis. Carbon monoxide and hydrogen can be utilized as syngas for liquid fuel production. Hydrogen can also be used for upgradation of YOL. So, these are the different applications which can be possible. Now, we will discuss the pyrolysis of waste plastics. So, waste plastic also contributes a significant part of MSW. So, this can also be process through the pyrolysis for pyrolysis oil production. So, mostly polyethylene and polypropylene are more easier and polystyrene is also easier for the production of pyrolysis oil through this route and that can be produced thermally or catalytically and these are degraded to produce liquid and gaseous hydrocarbons. So, for valorification waste P and PP can be converted to various value added products like LPG fuel, LOBS waxes, LOBS means lube oil based stocks, waxes, higher olefins, carbon nanotubes etcetera with emphasis for the end products that have good market. Number of processes have been developed worldwide, however most of them produce a liquid product a sort of plastic crude. Some small and medium scale plants are operative in India and other countries, but these do not have wide acceptability. So, waste plastics if you go for pyrolysis you will get liquid, LPG, fuel, LOVS, waxes, higher olefins, gas, heat applications and solid carbon nanotubes. These are the major route for the application. And if we see the reaction part mechanism, so in case of thermal pyrolysis, so this is a polymeric chain and then it is broken down and we get free radicals. So, free radical mechanism for thermal pyrolysis, so initiation then propagation. So, then say another uh, radical we are getting, so that will be converted to this one. So, this will be CH2 CH2 double bond and this will be uh, this radical again we will get another radical. So, this is called propagation and hydrogen transfer intermolecular. So, this is one radical. So, this radical this hydrogen transfer is taking place the free radical position here now it is converted to somewhere else. 
So, that way hydrogen transfer intermolecular is possible and then beta season. So, here we have some radical point this is the center point and now alpha and beta. So, this position will be cracked. So, this can be give us one C H 2 radical and this is the double bond here. So, that is alkene and dienes or this can break here also this bond can also break. So, then we will get uh, this is double bond and this C H 2 dot C H 2 C H 3 we can get. So, this is called beta season and hydrogen transfer intermolecular. So, intermolecular hydrogen. So, this is one molecular. So, here we have intramolecular same molecule the hydrogen transfer is taking here we are setting intermolecular. So, one molecule to other molecule. So, this was there initially we had now it is shifted to this one the radical is shifted to this one. So, that way hydrogen transfer is taking place. So, then termination second order recombination. So, different uh, free radicals are combined and giving us another polymer. So, this type of reaction mechanism is responsible for the pyrolysis of waste plastics and thermal cracking that is free radical mechanism, but in case of catalytic cracking this is carbonium ion formation. Now, we will see different factors which affect the performance of the pyrolysis process. So, plastic type and blend, temperature, residence time, presence of catalyst, catalyst loading, catalyst contact mode, reactor type and batch mode, continuous mode and fixed bed, fluidized bed reactor. Reactor may be applied in batch mode or in continuous mode. In continuous mode say fixed bed, fluidized bed reactor are mostly used and product yield at 425 degrees centigrade from real waste plastics that is from German source. In batch reactor we get oil, gas and char and CaO. Then we are getting thermal pyrolysis 76.7 percent, fire edge for catalytic pyrolysis 81.4 percent and gas 7.3 percent it is 9.6 percent, char 16 percent here it is 9 percent. So, char percentage is reduced, gas percentage is increasing, oil percentage is also increasing. So, this is one typical trend for the use of catalyst in the pyrolysis the product pattern this changes. Catalyst presence enhance the yield of both gas and oil products and reduce the yield of char product. This is the pyrolysis process flow. So, we can take the feedstock then cleaning, drying, size reduction, then plastics is coming we are heating. So, first we can melt it and then melt it sent to the pyrolyzer reactor and then after pyrolysis we get the vapors, then it is uh, condensation basically distillation. So, gasoline, kerosene, diesel different fractions we will get and here we will get the ch char, so carbon char. So, unlike biomass and wastes the plastics contains less char content particularly for P and PP. And here the pyrolysis gas which is not condensable it is coming through the gas scrubber and return to the pyrolysis for supplying the heat. And what will be the temperature requirement that can be decided by the melting point of the type of the plastics. Now, some pyrolysis bival production processes in 2012 above 10 kg per hour. So, these are the different uh, organization, different country and different technology reactor, different type of reactors used and capacity and capacity bio oil and different applications and these are the status. These are some other example in US, China, Finland it is provided. Here the somewhere catalytic first pyrolysis. So, different technologies are provided, capacities are provided and applications and status are also provided. So, we have made sufficient discussion on the on the pyrolysis of biomass and waste and waste plastics and along with we have made sufficient discussion on the management of solid and hazardous waste as well. So, after this in this class thank you very much for your presence.